What's up, y'all? Welcome back. Pitch side with Parker. Today, we've got some NWSL offseason news. The big news that Katarina Macario is turning pro and also some adjustments to the NWSL college draft and what that might mean as we approach the new NWSL season. Now, before I get into that, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I'm doing a giveaway soon, either at 200 subscribers or at the end of January, whichever one comes first. But I did want to do another giveaway, start giving back some more around the channel. So you can get that giveaway sooner if some new people subscribe, if you tell your friends about the channel. And uh, there will be a good chance to win a little bit of cash for yourself. That's the only hint that I can give you right now. But be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on the post notifications, and like this video before we even get started. So it's already been a busy NWSL offseason. I mean, we've seen trades to have Crystal Dunn going to Portland. Mallory Pugh headed to Chicago, Emily Ogle, Gabby Seiler going to Houston Dash. Um, so there's already been a lot of moves. We've already had the expansion draft as well, where Racing Louisville made some very interesting picks. And they will be number one on the clock for the upcoming college draft as well. Everybody has been assuming that Katarina Macario from Stanford is definitely going to be the number one option on the board. And she did just announce last night as I'm recording this that she is turning pro. Now, she didn't say anything about the NWSL. She didn't say anything about potentially going overseas. All she said is that she was going to be pursuing a pro career and not going back to Stanford because they're playing in the spring season. Macario is probably the most talented college player in the country she's already gotten two national team call-ups to go to camp with the u.s women's national team she won back-to-back -back mac herman awards i mean she's just an unbelievable talent i'm sure any team would want her and in most circumstances this would be a huge deal because you know you have to declare for the draft obviously to get involved but that's not the case this year. So the NWSL decided that they were gonna add a new rule this year. So this basically makes the second time that the NWSL has created a new rule sort of around Macario, the first more so than this one. But now apparently all senior players are eligible to be selected in the NWSL college draft, no matter if they declared or not. And I have some issues with this new rule that the NWSL is putting out. I've seen some reporting that apparently only 12 players had declared for the draft. And so basically the NWSL started getting word and they were saying, okay, well, there's 40 picks to make and there's only 12 players who've committed. So we're gonna need to change something up here so that we can do a draft. This new rule not only makes everybody eligible, but also makes it so that the NWSL teams who are allowed to select pretty much any college senior, whether they like it or not, they get to keep their rights protected until the 2022 preseason. So they're basically a full year from now. And this really just hamstrings players. Like you could get picked even if you don't want to, even if you're not sure if you want to go pro, even if you would rather go overseas. And the NWSL is going to be able to keep your rights, continue to be able to trade your rights, and ultimately you kind of have to check off with them whether you want to do something else or not the players can still decide not to show up to an nwsl camp even if they get selected and in my opinion i have a feeling that's what macario will do i think she will get selected number one because i mean if you're louisville given the way the rules are like you're gonna pick her and just see if it works out i feel like um it'd be kind of dumb not to but i'm just a little disappointed in the nwsl because i feel like this is the type of move that really restricts player freedom and that is something that exists in the league to an extent but I think people are willing to have that just under the guise of it makes for better parity in the league it makes it more competitive but yeah I suppose unconventional times call for unconventional measures but I just don't like the move from NWSL historically anytime you have somebody saying I'm gonna make up a rule where you become mine and there is nothing you can do about it. I own all of your rights. That doesn't really work out well. I think I could leave it at that, but just the energy that's behind that, the principle that's behind that, I just, I don't stand with at all. And it just doesn't really make any sense to me because also what does the NWSL really have to gain from this? Like, I guess their teams get the rights to certain players, but if you don't want to play for the team anyway, like how much does that really help you? I don't know leave your thoughts in the comments i'm sure that a lot of you will have thoughts on this new rule and on the college draft the draft will be on wednesday on twitch at 7 p.m eastern time so definitely tune into that 
I'm sure a lot of you will already be doing that. And yeah, as I said before, if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video. Yeah, man, become part of the community. I, I love having new people around here. I make a lot of women's soccer videos, a lot of Arsenal videos, a lot of men's soccer videos as well. A little bit of everything. And I'm sure if you look around the channel, you might find something you like. So I'll leave you there and I will catch y'all in the next one. Peace.